tonight, something different on Discovering. We'll get off the water, out of the woods, and into the dirt. We'll take a look at one of the UP's largest events. It's off-road racing at its best at the Bark River International Raceway. We'll meet with Tony Domboski, president of the UP Sportsman's Alliance, for a petition update and an overview of some of their latest endeavors. And we'll check in on a bass fishing tournament on the Menominee River. Well, this is the Chalk Hills Open Bass Off. It's on the Menominee River, up on the Chalk Hills Flowage by Moscano Island. That and more, so sit back, strap yourself in, and come on along. It's time for discovering. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone. Forest thick and healthy with birch and pine and oak. Surrounded by the greatest lakes this world has ever known. The black bear's awesome presence as he roams the hills and fields. The call of the timber wolf, the loon's lonesome trill. The eagle soaring high above, the trout lies deep and still. These are what I treasure. The only way I measure feelings that I have for this fine land. There is so much to discover when you're a long time lover of northern Michigan. Discovering is primarily a show based on outdoor activities like hunting and fishing. Tonight we'll veer off the path a bit and take a look at another sport. It's an event that has been going on here in the UP for 39 years. It's televised nationally on NBC and it draws spectators from near and far. It's 100 miles an hour on dirt and 200 feet in the air non-stop heart pounding action. It's fast. It's crazy. It's intense. And it's addictive. It's off-road racing in Bark River. In terms of the track itself, it's a mile and a half long, and particularly with the Pro 2 and Pro 4 drivers, they're getting up in excess of 110, 120 miles per hour. As they come over the big hill, what we affectionately call Taco Bell, uh, they're, they're jumping anywhere from 100 to 200 feet in the air, which makes for a, a tremendous show. Our track crew does an outstanding job with the track itself. It's a, just over a mile and a half track, and because of the moguls, number one, and number two, because of the, uh, they keep changing it up every year, so the drivers are always challenged from year to year as they come into uh, a new race at, in Park River, uh, much like Crandon. The gates open at noon on Thursdays with uh, campers starting to roll in, and then Starting on Fridays, we have practice runs about 5 to 7, 5 to 8. And then after that, every Friday night, we have a band. And then Saturday, of course, racing all day. And then Saturday night, again, a, a great local band. We tend to have a great party on the hill every year. So. If you've never been out here, it's a unique opportunity for you to come out and experience off-road racing in Bark River. Uh, it's one of eight in the series uh, throughout the Midwest. 
This will be our 39th year of off-road racing in Bark River. Uh, this year, the sponsors are Chip In, Boss, and Stewart uh, Manufacturing. It, it's a unique experience, and everybody loves it. Hi, my name's Chad Hoard. We're here at the Bark River Off-Road Track. Today we took a third, we got spun out, uh, had to go to the back, worked our way back up and we just, just ran out of time. We couldn't get up with the, the one and two liters. Um, you know, we feel we had the truck to do it, but it's just awesome to be here, right here in our hometown, in front of the Bark River fans and our friends and family. You know, we race from the east coast to the west coast, but just to be right here, you know, in our backyard and be able to do something like this at a professional level, you know, is awesome to do. And um, we came here in the spring. I won on Saturday and ended up getting a wreck on uh, Sunday. And we came here, you know, in, the, in the, the second Bark River, the later weekend, and we took a second yesterday and a third today. So just, you know, again, for Boss Snowplow, Amsoil, Maxis Tires, just everybody that helps us put us here at this professional level um, and to put us where we're at, you know, we're just pumped to be here. And, there's no other you know, better place to do it than right here in the UP. You know, like I say, earlier this year I raced in Las Vegas. Uh, we won out there, took a first and a second. I went out to Sh Charlotte, North Carolina by the NASCAR track. They got a dirt oval. We took two seconds out there. But again, just to come back here to, to Bark River, right in, the, right in the backyard, just to, you know, what better place, the UP, and um, just put on a show like this, you know, NBC covered, televised race, and just to promote our sponsors, we're happy to be here. Off-road racing, it's exciting. Um, it's kind of like, you know, mo motocross on steroids, motocross with a truck, and um, we're bumping, banging. These trucks have 20 inches of wheel travel, 900 horsepower. You know, we're door to door flying off these jumps sideways. And a lot of people, once they come to the race, they're just like, oh my goodness, I had no idea this existed. And it's right here in my backyard. And we have something that's awesome right here in the UP. And just to be able to put it on in front of the, you know, the, the fans here in Bark River, the friends and family here in the UP. And if anybody hasn't seen it, you definitely got to come check it out. Because like I say, I've got a lot of people who've gone to NHRA drag racing, been to NASCAR races and they come watch this and they're just like, oh my gosh, I've missed this this many years. And uh, it's, just, it's a lot of fun to put a show on for them. If you had never been here, you'd be amazed at the, the rigs that roll into this uh, uh, racetrack. They're coming from all over the country and in some cases even across borders from Mexican, Mexico and Canada. Uh, they're million dollar rigs that pull in and basically set up shop because anything that happens or needs to be done to those trucks can be done right here in their facility on our grounds uh, in between races. Uh, the trucks, the Pro 4s are anywhere from 250 to $500,000 truck vehicles uh, ready to roll. It's some of the most awesome racing you're ever going to see in the Midwest. Yeah, I, I just got to give a shout out to my team. The biggest advantage between off-road racing in Bark River or Crandon or in the Midwest with this series is the fact that unlike NASCAR where the average individual, the average spectator can't go into the pits and meet or talk with the drivers or their crew. Here you can walk right up to their, uh, their facility, their lot that they're in for the weekend and shake hands, they'll sign autographs, you can talk to them. Uh, it, it's uh, a very personable experience, unlike NASCAR, that you know, you're so removed from it. Uh, the, the drivers, the, uh, the pit crews are just more than happy to talk to you, shake your hand, talk to you, and, and welcome you to off-road racing best place to follow what's going on both in terms of just before race weekend or throughout the year is go to our website parkriveroffroad.com or we do also have a Facebook page that uh, if you friend us you'll find uh, ongoing information and particularly as we lead up to each of the race weekends uh, it's kept very active with some of the big, camp, big TV camera trucks and or some of the racers with their huge semis as they roll into the grounds 
Again, we have about 800 campers that we can accommodate and somewhere between six and 7,000 spectators per day that come in and join us uh, for each weekend. Each year, it's just uh, something that you, know, you won't want to miss. If you ever come out once, you'll uh, find yourself coming back year after year. The Upper Peninsula Sportsman's Alliance was started back in 1982 for the purpose of uniting sportsmen's groups for a common cause. I had the opportunity to sit down with the UP Sportsman's Alliance President, Tony Domboski, for an update on the Citizens for Professional Wildlife Management petition and to find out more about their latest endeavors. Uh, I recently attended uh, part of a uh, program down in Lower Michigan called the uh, Legislative Sportsman's Caucus Breakfast. I've been to two of them now, and one of the things that I learned when I was down there was the fact that not too many people down there know about what's going on in the Upper Peninsula. I had several senators from the state and legislatures ask me, I had my name tag on, UPSA, what is that? And I said, we are the Upper Peninsula Sportsman's Alliance. We are the voice of the Upper Peninsula Sportsman. And they said, well, how big are you? I said, well, we're quite large, so we're kind of influential. I said, what, what are you talking about large? Well, today I went downstairs and I got my materials out. I found out we have 50 clubs that belong. We have over 70 individuals and 25 businesses that belong. You total out everything of our total membership, representing roughly 14,000 people in the Upper Peninsula. Now, I had, as how we got started on this was uh, due to the Citizens for Professional Wildlife Management petition drive, which we just completed. I was on the uh, the, the council or the uh, steering committee for the state, and we just I just got word today that uh, we have met the state board of canvassers. We'll be meeting uh, early next week. Uh, we, they have uh, went through our petitions and they. Uh, of course, the hours are going to throw some out, but we are roughly uh, 40,000 above what we needed. So all we're going to, they're, they're going to meet, and they'll approve our petition drive. Then it'll be up to our senators and our and our legislatures to approve our petition. We think this is a great step in, in for the Upper Peninsula. But now let's get down to where I really want to talk about. During this petition drive, we found that uh, there was a whole lot of people in the Upper Peninsula didn't know about us. So I set out a goal. We need to make ourselves known. We need to let the people know that we're representing them in the statewide. In doing this, we have several things that, that I have thought about, and that, that is to, uh, I wrote a letter to the director of the Michigan DNR stating that we are the second largest group of sportsmen in the state of Michigan behind MUCC. Uh, with 13,000 people, I think we are quite large. And I indicated to him that we felt that we need to be part of the policy programming uh, policies for things that are happening in the future with regard to the, to the great Michigan outdoors that we have. And uh, I will be meeting him with him personally in August. Uh, he said he wants to sit down and talk to me and we're going to see what we can do about doing this. But there's some other things that we're doing. Uh, we voted the UPSA and their board. We had our local meetings. We established some priorities as to what we need to look at in the Upper Peninsula. Uh, and it covers like six different items. I'm not going to cover them all here right now, but we decided that we can't just go in there and jump up and say we want we want to do this in all six different areas. But we selected what we thought would be the top priority, and right now that would be wildlife management on purchased land that had been purchased with game funds. We want to uh, see to it that funds that were provided for these state lands, that we are managing them for game and wildlife species. This is 
we feel that this is very important. And it covers lots of things like the uh, uh, rotation of uh, aspen products and, and, and uh, the, the planting of hardwoods and what, what we're doing on these state forest lands that were purchased with game funds. Now those game funds come of our part of our hunting licenses and stuff. So we think we, <coughs> we want to see how things are going on that. And one of the things I'd like to remind people of that uh, there's roughly two million acres of, of state-owned land in the Upper Peninsula. And that's roughly one quarter of the acreage in the Upper Peninsula. And that is state-owned state -owned land. And uh, UPSA feels that virtually this is our land up here. Uh, we, we would really like to see this managed for game species, wildlife habitat, and things like that. Uh, recently on a radio program uh, out of Escanaba here last Saturday, uh, John Azoga, a well-known wildlife biologist from the Upper Peninsula, uh, virtually one of the authorities on, on, on deer in the Upper Peninsula. Uh, after uh, discussing uh, what I was just discussing, what we are going through, or what we're going to be submitting to the DNR, he strongly, strongly supports what we are doing. He said, this is the way we have to do it. Now, in addition to some other things that we are going to be recommending to the DNR, and that is a supplemental feeding. Now, last year they authorized that uh, individuals could go out and feed deer. All they had to do was get a, a permit and they could go out and, and feed the deer. At the, but it was a late start. Now, everybody knows that the last two winters we had here in the Upper Peninsula were severe. Our deer count probably is probably down as low as it's ever been. We are going to be recommending that instead of waiting till the real cold and the snow hits, uh, we want to enable the people to start feeding deer early. And that is uh, to aid those uh, does uh, so our reproduction rate will start building back up again. But we feel this is very important. The, the way we're going now, of people not seeing that many fawns and things like that, we feel it's very important that we start a feeding program that is going to be much, easy, much quicker. Uh, we're going to be looking at doing some things, so you can be looking forward for uh, the name UPSA to be coming out here in the new future. You know, there's a fishing tournament just about every weekend somewhere in the UP. I stopped in to check out a bass tournament that took place on the Menominee River. Well, this is a Chalk Hills Open Bass Off. It's on the Menominee River up on the Chalk Hills Flowage by Moscano Island. Uh, it's, I've been running it for about three years. Mike Melandic previously put it on. Uh, good tournament. Uh, lately, a lot of largemouth, surprisingly, even though the Menominee River is known as a smallmouth river. But largemouth have been winning for the last five to six years. So the guys have been really concentrating a little more towards the largemouth, and that helped out a little bit today. Uh, got us second place. But the guys have won it again, the same, same two guys, six, five, six years in a row, so maybe next year. I oh, went out and ended up uh, finding a good batch of fish and uh, held on them most of the day. We ended up pulling 16 pounds, which is a pretty lightweight for this body of water. We won this tournament before with 22, 23 pounds. Um, Bite's been tough all, all summer long, everywhere we go, so it, it worked out good for us today. In the past, we've had our big bass was 6.1 one year. A lot of years we had it, five pounds is big bass. So there's, the quality of fishing is amazing in this body of water, it really is. But uh, I'm a largemouth fisherman. These guys all love smallmouth, so that's my edge out here. <laughs> it's lots of stuff for me to fish, so it works out well. Well, today wasn't a good day for me. We caught fish. We must have caught 15 fish that were undersized. Got a couple of three pounders, a couple of 15 inchers, but it just wasn't my day. You know, some guys caught a lot of fish today and it's been a little crazy all year. I went to some of my favorite spots where I just go and just slam fish one after another. I probably screwed up and spent too much time in that spot. We sit there for three hours working it back and forth, back and forth, because I know there's big fish there. Were there any big fish there today? No. Went to a couple other spots, caught some fish, and what did I do? I should have stayed there. I went, no, I went back to the spots, and I said, they got to be big fish there, and they never were there. But that's fishing, and that's what's good about tournament fishing, because somebody always gets them. 
One thing about tournament fishing in the UP, there's plenty of tournaments everywhere. Everybody thinks, well, I don't have a $50,000 boat. I don't even go fishing that much. How am I going to go into a tournament? If you've got a little 12, 14 foot boat, you can get in a tournament someplace. It's a lot of fun. And I'll tell you, I've seen many tournaments where the guys with the $50,000 boats don't win it. A guy comes in with his little 14 foot boat. All it takes, find out where the tournament is, spend a little time, fish it a couple times, pre-fish it, but don't make a mistake in doing something stupid like fishing it the day before when you hook a five pounder and then, he, then you got it and then you go back the next day and don't catch nothing. But it's something that everybody can do and that's a big misconception. Everybody thinks you gotta have the big boat, everything to go with it, you can do it on a budget. It's, it's crucial to know the lake, but not as much as people think. I've seen many times where a guy will come on a body of water, maybe hasn't fished it in five years, maybe never fished it at all, and he ends up winning, beating out all the local people that are fishing the lake and don't like the back of their hand. So that's another thing. You don't have to know the water. Basically, all you got to do is a little common sense. You got to figure out, am I fishing in stained water, clear water? A lot of that, it doesn't matter where you're fishing. You know, bass, whether it's smallmouth or largemouth bass, are the same no matter where the location is. A lot, if you're used to fishing a certain way, certain type of water that you fish, by all means, that could work on a new lake that you've never fished before. Uh, same weekend every year, July 19th time frame. I know that uh, kind of bumps heads with the brown trout derby, but we fish for bass, so it doesn't really bother us. Just keep an eye on uh, Facebook, Anthony Getchell, and uh, I'll friend you and I'll let you know when the tournament's gonna happen. Here's a look at what's happening in the UP. On August 2nd, the Delta County Gun Owners Association will be hosting a picnic at Pioneer Trail Park beginning at 12 noon. There will be lots of food, music, a bounce house, and games for the kids. It's open to the public, so stop in and join the festivities. The cost is 10 bucks for adults and 5 for kids under 12. Also this coming weekend, it's the Wood Tech Music Festival in Hermansville. Four days of country, rock, bluegrass, and folk. Two stages and a couple of dozen bands. There's food and beverages on the grounds and carry-ins are welcome. Get your tickets and campsites and find out everything you need to know at woodtickfestival.com. Well, that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed watching and we'll see you next week right here on Discovering.